Ayyid Saeed says he'll wait for official results before declaring victory in yesterday's election, but exit polls show him winning by a landslide. Only 27.7% of the electorate went to the polls. William Lawrence, a former diplomat in Tunisia and North Africa director of National Council on U.S. Arab relations, is in Tunis and tells me and tells uh, Carol Vadam that uh, most Tunisians were not interested in this election. This is half the participation rate as when Saeed was the first elected in 2019, and while it's comparable with the uh, participation rate when the new constitutional referendum, which is Uh, that constitution Saeed wrote himself, passed a little better than the 11% turnout uh, for the last uh, legislative elections, um, which were, I think, the second lowest in the history of modern de- uh, democracies or modern voting. And so th- there's a general um, disgust um, of Tunisians with politics, and so they're either voting with Saeed because there's their disgust, or they're just not voting because they're disgusted. I must have talked with you know, well over 100 people um, coming into Tunisia and, and around, and most of the people I talked to weren't voting. Now, the ones that were voting, um, only a few were voting for the opposition candidates because the three viable opposition candidates were all excluded. Um, nine candidates had various uh, legal actions against them. Several were in jail. A total, of, and a, I think a total of something of 17 were excluded, and the two they allowed to, they put one in jail. The President Kai Saeed, he imprisoned two of his main opponents earlier, like you mentioned, including a businessman. What can you tell us about those two men? So all of these were trumped up charges. They were all invented. All the you know judicial and human rights and press organizations said so. And uh, it's just part of a systematic uh, effort by the uh, police in Tunisia to execute the president's wishes by muzzling the opposition. There are over 170 political prisoners now. Over a thousand people have been arrested and detained uh, since the coup, uh, and the entire parliament shut down and replaced with a with a yes man parliament uh, under new rules where that allows them to control the parliament. And so, no one takes the charges seriously. You know, civil society leaders, lawyers, journalists, others have called this election a sham. Does the outside world see it that way? And if so, will there be any repercussions, do you think, for Saeed? Those that pay attention do. Most don't pay attention. You know, Tunisia is rather inco- inconsequential in world affairs. Uh, and that's a long descent from the Tunisia that won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2015 after the historic saving of democracy in the 2013-14 period, uh, becoming the only Arab democracy and the only very successful outcome of the Arab Spring. But uh, because of the personality and style of the president, and I've met with senior officials from several governments here, including our own, because of the uh, his style, they don't see any um, reason to push him harder or try to get him to change course because He's not listening. You're there in Tunis, and you were just driving around in your car, you told me, just a few minutes ago. What What is it like on the streets? Are most people celebrating? Nope, didn't see any celebrations at all. I saw some reported in the news, but I was downtown all around, so it's as if the election hadn't happened. And interestingly, you know, I was an observer in the 11 and 14 elections, and you know, there's usually, and, and, and has a, you know, been around during uh, the 19 elections, you know, 18 municipal elections um, under which I saw a lot of the political campaign. There's usually a lot of paraphernalia and posters and leaflets and all of that, you know, the day after the election. Nothing. You would have no sense that an election had happened at all. In fact, a lot of international people remarked that it was interesting to have a presidential campaign without a campaign. That was William Lawrence, a former diplomat in Tunisia and North Africa director of the National Council on U.S.-Arab Relations. He was speaking to VOA's Carol Van Dam from Tunis. Embattled Kenyan Deputy President Rigathi Gachaga on Thursday made a last-ditch attempt to block an impeachment vote against him in the National Assembly with more than 10 petitions filed in different courts challenging the process. Members of parliament are next Tuesday expected to vote on whether the impeachment motion brought to the House by Mwegi Mutusi, a legislator affiliated to President William Ruto's governing coalition, should proceed to full trial in the Senate. 
The DP faces 11 charges related to alleged economic crimes, abuse of office, and gross violations of the Constitution. Parliament invited the public to give their views on the impeachment motion on Friday, seeking to seal a legal loophole that has seen some Senate decisions to remove country governors from office are overturned by the courts. But Mr. Gachagora in the court petition personally filed by him urges that his impeachment process is already flawed, questioning the integrity of a public participation exercise conducted on a single day. He also denies accusations that he and his family members have corruptly amassed wealth within the two years he has served as a DP. The impeachment charges against him, he urges, are politically motivated, alluding to his fallout with President William Ruto that has publicly played out in the past five months. President Ruto has yet to publicly comment on the matter, but he is widely believed to have signaled his troops in parliament to proceed with a plan to oust his deputy in what is shaping up to be a do, a do or die battle between the two leaders. The repercussions of the impeachment outcome on their future political careers mean that either of them can't afford to lose. Fogachagua being removed from office by impeachment would make him ineligible to hold public office, extinguishing his ambition to succeed President William Ruto in the next general election in 2027 or 2032. Surviving the Ulster bid would, however, mark a major personal victory for the DP, cementing his status as the political king of the populous Mount Kenya region and giving him a strong bargaining platform in future political alliances. While his critics see him as a polarizing figure, Mr. Gachagua's political star has been rising in the region, partly helped by his knack for amplifying grievances over perceived inequitable distribution of public resources. It is not uncommon for Kenyan politicians to ride a wave of grievance politics to power. With the country's current president, Ruto, and his predecessor, Uhuru Kenyatta, being notable beneficiaries. The two leaders won the 2013 election with, Mount, with Mr. Kenyatta as presidential candidate and Dr. Ruto, his running mate, on the back of a campaign in which they were seen to exploit widespread resentment in their regional political strongholds towards those perceived to have been supportive 